Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you may be in this beautiful world. Welcome to your IT Pro Keynote here at Commsverse online, everywhere in the cloud. Uh, becoming the hero of modern communications for the business happens to be our topic for the day. Uh, my name is Jamie Stark. I'm a principal program manager. I'm joined by my colleague, Sean Wilson, a solutions architect. We both are employees for Microsoft, and we just so happen to be people who talk about Teams. Um, and uh, and yeah, we've been doing this talking about Teams and before that Skype for Business and before that Link for a little while now. Um, just as a, as a way to first to introduce myself, then I'm gonna switch over to my colleague, Sean, and allow him to introduce himself as well. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm a program manager. I tweet sporadically at no more phones because you know, no more phones, kind of a funny thing about it, you see. Anyway, um, I spent a little bit of time doing contact centers uh, back in the day, and then uh, had the opportunity to come over to Microsoft, surprisingly enough, as in, in sales, um, looking after the speech server product. Um, then uh, sometime, not long after I joined, they started looking around and going, hey, does anybody plug phones into computers around here? And uh, yeah, that's kind of what contact center software is all about. So from there, had the opportunity to uh, to get into marketing for uh, what at the time was a, I think, beta three of OCS and then into Link and Skype for Business. And now I look after um, Teams Admin Center in the engineering organization. That wonderful picture that my friend and colleague, Sean, found is from a video that you should not uh, do a search for on the internet. I would appreciate that. Thank you so much, um, Sean. Yeah, it would be awesome if you could uh, introduce yourself as well. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, you know, my name is Sean Wilson. I'm a solutions architect. I actually support our partners uh, in, in a whole variety of spaces. But before I kind of get into that, my background has been in collaboration and video technologies for almost two decades. Um, you know, but really, it, it really is all about video with me. Anybody that knows me, right? Like the running joke is how many cameras do I have plugged in at one time? Right now, it happens to be five, actually six, if I count the OBS <laughs> one that I'm running the blue, so the green screen on. Um, but, you know, the the I started in MSIT and spent some time there running, you know, uh, OCS and our conferencing and actually live meeting back in the day. But really, it was like a lot of experience in the VTC and video space. And then randomly, we were like about to start this thing called Skype for Business. And so uh, I got recruited over to marketing to come over and help them with their transition of Skype for Business and uh, the link to Skype for Business and then some IT Pro pieces. Uh, but I did that for, you know, three years. And that's where Jamie and I really met. Uh, before I kind of rolled into this current role. And as I said, you know, it's all about the video and staging. And it really all started with, hey, I have this great idea. Let's start a broadcast series. And Jamie was like, oh, that, that, that sounds pretty cool. We could, you know, use our, uh, use the, the Skype meeting broadcast tool to really show that anybody could do it. And so this Im image here is actually one of our early on sessions where the reason I bring this one up is you'll see there's that that Soji screen in the back and the posters on the wall and, you know, his his no more PBX signs. And Jamie, what's that in your your lap? <laughs> <laughs> this is I, I, I love this picture. This is it, it, it's appropriate to kind of break this down a little bit. Right. So so this isn't some some fancy set. Yes. There are fancy sets at Microsoft. Yes, we we can do you know fancy video presentations. Sean and I, as as humble marketers at, at the lowest rung of the of the organization, we we simply did not have the budget for that. And 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 we thought like, hey, this is kind of this is kind of cool. Like this is about you know humble humble folks who who have a widget and want to talk about it. They can set up a camera and their laptop and they can you know broadcast to thousands. Like. What a fantastic way to extend the reach of of marketers, and so we we thought like, well, we should we should do that. We should you know kind of use the product to 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 to, to advocate the, for the product, right? Much in the same way that that this is happening here, that 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 we're having 
that we're having this conference, you know, here using Teams Live Events. It's just, it's phenomenal. Um, and it, let me just be really super clear, like what Sean and I were doing was 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 nothing in comparison to what's happening here <laughs> with this show. Like this is this is insane in terms of the the coordination and the and the work and the um, and the, the logistics of it all. Like we would literally plug in a, a video camera and a laptop and talk. Anyway, um, so yeah, this is my office. The showed you screen behind was left over from an office move. Those posters up on the wall were the ones that we gave out at LinkCon 2014. I want to say. Um, <laughs> That have that that have you know I think every MVP who's listening is at some point made an edit or an update to one of those <laughs> to one of those posters if they were around at the time. And sitting in my lap is the giant networking guide um, that I I had the pleasure of being a of being a very minor editor and writing a little bit for, but it's like 400 pages of 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 really brutal uh, detail around what it means to to set up and have a and have a great meeting. And so yeah, Sean and I. We would um, we would uh, roll in. I think I think generally on a you know Thursday or Friday morning, um, have a rough idea of what we want to talk about. Like, hey, let's talk about size and networks, and then have three or four talking points, and then and then just kind of go for it. This perhaps will follow a very similar um, uh, very similar path. This this session, I expect. Yeah. yeah. I I, so I'm gonna kind of yes, I think it very much does, and and part of the reason was originally. You know, if you think about it, we've come a long way, right? We originally started, you know, you doing videos on Presence Liar or or me doing Skype for Business, you know, produced videos for step-by-step -step guides. And then we decided, hey, we're going to do this broadcast. And now, you know, we've got, we're in an event that, that these guys have coordinated and pulled together. One of the things that I wanted to, to do is kind of weird, um, uh, you know, the that I wrote the the abstract for this and and I don't like to read abstracts but it was really interesting it says the needs of business are changing faster than ever before wow I must have had a crystal ball I, I just because we we then literally three months later changed the entire world right and as IT professionals we are competing with the world of app stores and availability of software solutions that were once only available to IT Oh wait, I'm working from home. I'm going to use whatever tool I can. And then finally, I had incorporated that you know users are expecting uh, amazing experiences, while the business wants to ensure secure and compliant solutions. Right. All of this was written on on the premise that we're not not premises premise that we are having to understand that we were in a changing world, and this was long before we got to COVID. And so, you know, one of the things for me that really stood out is that we're not only have we come a long way from, you know, three months ago, we've come a long way in the years, right? We, Jamie and I were, you know, we, we've met a few times to talk about this. And we, one of the things I was going to bring up and throw up on the screen was, uh, was our, our uh, was a punch down tool, right? And, and, and we were to talk about like the communication side. And that's not really, if you really think about that, that's not really pertinent today because there are people in this audience that are very technical that never dealt with copper, right? Um, they're not all voice and comms people, which is new for Jamie and I up until recently. So these are the topics we're going to cover. And now you're going to see zero presentation and just get to listen to us you know, go back and forth in, in conversations. So Jamie, tell me a little bit about your thoughts on we've come a long way and what that means to you. Yeah, like, like so the first thing that I, that I think of is just what I was talking about a little bit in the intro of how, you know, we, we were doing this, um, this, this, this thing with, uh, <clears throat> you know, with the broadcast. And for those of you that, that, that aren't familiar with the, the legacy broadcast, it's fine. You don't have to go back to YouTube to watch them, but the the image or the the kind of um, for the majority of the series, we, um, we had moved into a new building, and that building had this really funky kind of background to it with this colored glass, and that's actually what Sean is sitting in in front of now. So, um, producers, if you could just go back to Sean, I'm going to go ahead and keep talking, but just just so that way folks could folks could see Sean real quick. Um, what what 
he, when he has is this kind of weird multicolor background and then and then that shoji screen that was from my office like that is actually in there as well sean has recreated this through the power of OneDrive, a, a green screen and again you know half a dozen cameras because he's crazy and um and so this is this is literally like what we would what we would do is we would you know plug in the camera and sit in front of the thing and then all right, now you can now you can stop showing shots. Well, and, and the funny part is, this case doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. Oh, that's right. Oh, of course. Yeah, the whole building's been been torn down because they're anyway they're remodeling the campus and 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 this building doesn't isn't even there anyway. Um, so yeah, like we've come so far. I've always I've always thought about how, um, especially especially as as these technologies more and more depend on the foundation on, on strong foundational technologies um you know you can't you you can't have you know in a lot of cases you can have the internet without having you know tcp ip it's great to understand tcp ip um when you have a foundation of the kind of the whole osi stack and and understand you know what what layer one and, and, and two and three do and then that kind of helps you understand how how ip can work and the that that whole concept i've always i've always just Maybe that was my training. I always just thought like, no, this is this is necessary. This is what you need in order to in order to understand the stuff. And so like, you know, the 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 punch down block is just is is kind of one of those things like breathing. And and a lot of folks don't understand. Like back in the day when you were having to connect um have connect copper circuits together, you would use a um a, a piece of infrastructure that would have um copper coming in on either side, and then you would literally punch the piece of wire into the connector to be able to make connections across um across you know from your from your pbx to um you know lines that are going out to stations in your uh in your business or whatever and and now that's it's almost an anachronism right it's just it it has it has come so far that um you know when we think about these analogies or when we think about these technologies and and use them as um use them as examples for things that are happening today uh, we have to just be careful about that being you know old folks <laughs> from a technology perspective in this which is weird to think about i don't think about myself as that as, as someone who's been in this in this space long enough to have that kind of perspective but it's 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 weird it's odd um yeah um and then and then now like here we are with a world that i i swear we've seen a decade of business transformation um happen in the last you know three months and that's it's just it's 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 crazy and it's humbling and it's wild and it's um it's something that i just i i guess i think first of just pausing and 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 saying to everybody that's out there listening like you've you've really been um remarkable agents of change whether you're you know a consultant and you're you're working to um you're working on behalf of you know dozens of different companies who are who are trying to deal with you know this new reality of of having different um, of different working environments and situations, or you are um, a, a member of an IT organization in an you know in a in an enterprise or another um, another company, and you need to uh, and and you were the one who was actually in the process of rolling out these technologies. Like this has been amazing. And granted, like as practitioners. We've been talking about this forever. I think the the term work is work is what you do, not where you go. I, I remember that around the link 2010 time frame. Like I like I remember having a big play around around work being a set of activities, not a place. Um, and and t-shirts and stickers around all that, you know, from a you know, from the standard kind of big marketing perspective. I remember that very vividly in the 2010-ish time frame, right? So, the, so for ten years we've been talking about this stuff, and now it's and now it's happened, and now it's upon us, and that's um, it's we've we've done amazing work. I can just see by the usage of my own little piece of the product in Teams Admin Center how ridiculously <laughs> the, the usage has increased, and and um and yeah, and, you know, coming from an engineering perspective, it's humbling. But I know Sean, you've been you've been in the in the in the role of kind of helping helping the practitioners at at, cons, at consultancies and partners um understand what are what are some of the best ways to help folks take on teams and to be successful with it um what's that what's that been like over the last couple of months uh so it's really interesting it's we talked about digital transformation 
right? And we'll we'll talk more about business transformation, digital transformation in a bit. But it really has been a it, it's been two twofold. One was the i the IT organizations and the partners really became uh, heroes overnight, right? They were the ones that were literally front lines to enable customers. You know, I, I remember I've actually talked to a number of like it was instantly overnight. Our partners were able to or not only able, but were infiltrated into our organ into companies to help them with securely deploying teams for collaboration, chat and calling. One of the ones for me that that Jamie you'll love was uh, we actually had a had a number of voice partners that you know we always say voice is religion and it's the longest thing for for a customer and a company to think and move forward. Uh, so one of the things that was interesting uh, was that we actually had uh, uh, customers that completely abandoned their PBX and their phone numbers, like overnight rip and replace because they couldn't get to their phones anymore and so where we see that change and we see partners having to make that shift to hey how do i think about vpn now right before it was yeah i'm enabling some remote users no we actually saw you know microsoft had been claiming or were using a, a statistic from idc saying that you know 72 percent of all uh, all users would be remote or mobile by 2020. I, I think they got the number wrong, right? Um, and so, you know, as we see that that the world is changing and the way that our partners and our customers are literally making themselves do with the the and lack of a term, quick and dirty deployments and ensuring that they're there, we actually uncovered a lot of things that really brought value within Teams and that whole Microsoft 365 stack around the security and the compliance that also helped with that user experience. You know, Jamie, you really saw this kind of land actually and in, in start early January. Maybe you want to give some kind of context to that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so <clears throat> as we um, as we were coming into January um, in, in in the Teams Admin Center org, uh, we started to see um, reports of people who are having difficulty using services out of out of China, um, and and we're like, oh, it's, it's kind of strange, you know, like yeah, there's there's definitely usage out of there, but we we um, you know we weren't we weren't expecting like it was just surprising. Um, and and it was the result of COVID. It was a result of of already folks starting a work from home transition um, in that time frame. And because of the way that the that the network was was operating, Teams Admin Center was was even more um, slow and dysfunctional and and difficult for folks to um, to use in these in these situations. So we did a whole bunch of rearchitecting work in January, um, and then um, and then it was it was kind of it was kind of slow, and it was all right. Like we we were getting. We were getting kind of normal usage. Three architecture worked. We were seeing that folks were able to, even though a lot of the networking egress points were being were being throttled and were being um, overrun essentially by traffic. We, we folks were still able to get in and use the product. That felt good. Um, and then and then we started to see usage just just slowly kind of creep up. And I and I just that while you were talking, I just had brought up my uh, my charts to to kind of remind myself of what that. Of what that looked like. So, so January and February were kind of normal, just in terms of the number of um, number of tenants that that came in. Um, and then in and then in April it doubled. I'm sorry, in March it doubled. So going from <laughs> going from February to March, we're like, whoa, <laughs> oh my goodness. And I remember like we we'd start working from home in the beginning of March, and 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 I and like every week I was like, oh wow, there's another record. Oh wow, there's another record. Oh wow, there's another record. And it just kept going. Um, and, and our and our peak month was in May, so we were two and a half times number of tenants accessing Teams Admin Center um, from from February to April. And obviously, you know, I'm not using exact numbers. I don't want to, you know, make some market changing whatever kind of. But two and a half, like it's a lot. Um, and we haven't come down to baseline. Um, so so June effectively is equivalent in 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 kind of tenant you know scale um as as march and that's that's remarkable 
Um, you know, and obviously we're, you know, very, very happy that we were able to, you know, keep the service up and running. There's a bunch of work that we did, not just in Teams Admin Center and our kind of our kind of pieces that we that we interface with, but broadly across the service, there's stuff that we did to to ensure that, you know, um, we weren't we, we, we weren't going to have any risks by hitting that that level of usage um, that we could that we could continue to, to keep the service operating and, and keep everything healthy. And so that means, you know, everything from, um, you know, doing sampling of telemetry to, um, you know, having having different features being throttled in different ways to where, um, you know, certain timers aren't quite as aggressive and things like that, where. Um, where we're always ensuring that that the customer experience is paramount, but we want to ensure that that experience is paramount for everybody and that the service remains stable and operational for everybody. And yeah, it was a, it was a really crazy time, um, and it was it was this time that you know we're seeing we're seeing all this all this movement and all this and all this change in the way that we that we think about business. Um, and it's it, it's crazy to be a part of, and it's crazy to see where this. Um, where this is going to go, and I guess on the one hand, um, I'm 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 thankful that um, that we have had the ability over the last few years to 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 be smart about teams and to learn about what what works for customers and to be able to put um, into place programs and templates and 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 help guides and all the things that um, that can help folks accelerate their their adoption deployment. Um, God, you know, and I just I think back like what what if this was you know ten years ago? <laughs> like, yeah, you can work from home. That'd be great. Here's what you do. Okay, first you get a hardware load balancer. Okay, now we're going to talk about SNAT versus DNAT, and right, and you're just like, oh no, like oh this is wrong, ridiculous. But like that's how that's how Microsoft was able to manage business continuity during the infrequent snowfalls. You know that that we would get in Seattle every every you know random year. Well, I don't know every five years or so. There's a snow that just destroys Seattle, the the the, the broader Puget Sound area, and and no one can go anywhere. And they shut down the buses, and the mayor comes on the radio and says, "Hey, it's super dangerous. Don't go anywhere." And and everybody that actually gets snow in their in their region laughs because it's like you know four inches or whatever, but it completely destroys the town. And Microsoft had sized our edge deployment to where 80% of the Puget Sound workforce could be working from home and could be just fine. But clearly that's coming from a, a privilege and a wealth of resources that we were able to do that. Can't expect every company to have that level of deployment you know, on premises, right? But in the cloud, you just get that. And so I think I'm so thankful that we have that 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 infrastructure and and the and the and the, and the the knowledge and the and and the the deliverables and the um, and the the packaged material and the packaged um, learnings, tribal knowledge, the from this broader community um, and from and from the deployments and from customers that have that have gone through this, that we were able to then synthesize back out into the world to be able to help folks get started really quick. Um, yeah, and uh, right, like so. Clearly, no one wants to see the level of like disruption and 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 everything else. But at the same time, we were. Um, I feel I feel fortunate that we were able to be in a place where we could we could quickly turn around and be useful in in a dramatic way to a lot of folks. You, you know, one of the things to that that I think we also take into account. You know, I know the the you know Caruana has got an adoption session tomorrow. We've got you know a lot of of dynamics across this and Jamie you and I love to you know tell UDP jokes that we don't know if they ever land <laughs> but you know fundamentally it's moving from about the technology in in really about the people and we've always said that the moment of success is when the technology becomes transparent right and one of the things that you know we you know, and, and to, to quote Jamie and his, where he was with, with TAC, with the Teams Admin Center, you know, in April, we saw more than 200 million users, right? But one of the things that we need to think about is we saw, or 200 meeting participants, sorry. One of the things, though, that was really interesting is in over a month, we added 31 million daily active users. Okay. We went went up to 75 million daily active users, right? Like in Satya during the earnings call says, you know, we see two years where the digital transformation just two months. I think that's a typo. Honestly, we have seen digital transformation 
But one of the things that I wanted to also throw in there is it's not just about digital transformation. It's about virtual and remote transformation, right? It's about the people we're seeing, partners and customers having to embrace whole new worlds of best practices, right? Best practices in home usage, best practices in, you know, wellness, right? Best practices in work-life balance, which by the way, work-life balance kind of flew out the window for those that were used to being able to disconnect the minute they left the office, right? I know that I've always worked, I've worked remote for the last three years and partially before that. So I had kind of a rhythm and cadence and the people I work with every day would work in the office. And so there was a clear delineation of kind of when they got in the office and when they didn't. And what you've seen is we've actually seen people working even longer. Um, we've seen people that that uh, that have not worked and we're having to kind of make that shift and we're having to uh, understand that that business transformation that we're seeing is that, you know, it, it's really, a, a, there's a piece that's a technology, but we're also, it's really interesting to see how much of it is is it people. Um, one of the things for me that, that really stands out is I kind of, I, I use this phrase and Jamie and I were joking about it and we talk about business continuity. Well, business continuity is not disaster recovery anymore. Business continuity is not backups and redundant circuits. Business continuity is the world just had a transformational event and I need to be able to shift my entire business to operate. And, you know, we we look at that and I've got a, you know, there was a couple examples where we see that. We had a, a in this last year, I had a customer before COVID, before any of this, that was actually in uh, the agricultural space. And we sat down with them and they weren't thinking about the business from IT, they were thinking about the technology. And we were having a conversation and the security, chief security officer or complier, uh, safety officer walks into the room and puts down two cell phones and a two-way radio. And I, I, I had to ask the question, I'm like, can you explain to me like we're all in this mobile world, we're mobile first. And they're like, yeah, we have locations, they had grain silos, and they were running uh, DSL, so 1.5, 36, or um, uh, 256K DSL lines, like to these silos. And he said, hey, we can't, we need to be able, if there's an emergency, we need to be able to get everybody in touch. Well, with the modernization, we were able to have the conversation. They'd actually had, were just moving everything to cable modems. We talked to them about, hey, by the way, did you actually know that with the mobile device, you can actually use the, the cellular towers as well? And you have this full digital experience of being able to bring everybody into the mix, not just the one person that's there and you and using flip phones and two-way radios. And so we saw that sometimes we need to think from the business perspective we need to understand those business requirements you know uh, one of our one of my customers that i worked with uh actually back when jamie and i worked together they're in the ppe business right the personal protective equipment business and literally has been like did skype for business moved to teams has moved everything to direct routing but all in in like within their office and hadn't considered what would happen in this case. And overnight, they were able to keep their business going. They were able because they were, and, and this is where we were talking about being the hero of the business is because it, even in other companies where CIOs had had the forethought to say, hey, we need to move to this cloud-centric world, they're now enabling the users to meet their requirements and needs. And so, you know, Jamie, I know one of the things we talked about a little bit was, you know, a lot of the community that's sitting on this call is is probably pretty well versed in deep PowerShell and, and can write scripts that you and I literally botched at least a dozen times <laughs> on video. But I'm the reason you probably had massive Teams Admin Center usage and adoption is because a whole new generation of IT professionals were supporting us. 
Oh yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I firmly believe that <clears throat> a lot of the usage that we saw, you know, also backed up by telemetry. This is just me, you know, kind of pulling stuff out of my hat here. Um, but but a lot of the usage was was not just um, net new tenants springing up as a result of COVID and going like, oh hey, we've got to go and figure out some way to keep our business up operating. It was existing tenants that were changing the way that their business operates um, using using Teams and and using you know so whether whether that's like okay now we've got to like roll out meetings to more people oh now it means we've got to go roll out voice to more people oh we're, in the past we've we've not had this capability we've kept this we've kept this away from folks now we're going to now we're going to give it to them so that way they have more their, more flexibility um, I don't know like as I think back to customer engagements oh. In 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 the before times, <laughs> um, I think about the their the level of rigor and the level of analysis and the level of um, of introspection that went into into every step of a deployment was was incredibly high and and appropriately so. Um, you know, certainly certainly IT does does not want to be. No one wants to be. You know the um, the fall guy for a for a bad you know project that goes sideways at a at a big organization. Um, that that you know causes a bunch of you know pain and strife and money and whatever. So of course there's going to be a bunch of a bunch of analysis and a bunch of and a bunch of guidance here. Um, and I, what's what's interesting is that we've we've shown that like yes, of course that's important to make sure that we're not missing anything. But but you can jump in like it, like it is possible to jump in and it is possible to get to get stuff up and running. Now what what crosses my mind is so what. What are we? What are we leaving unexplored? What are What are we leaving um, that that needs to that needs to be addressed? Right. Like at some point, maybe this is maybe this has happened for for folks out um, out there today. Maybe this is something that you see on the forecast. You know, in the horizon. Maybe this is not even in your. Um, maybe maybe this is way too far out. But but at some point. Things will will move to a kind of a, a place where you can take a breath and you can relax. And you can start thinking again about about how to be planful going forward. Whether that means that you're you're physically back in the office or or not, I don't know. Um, but but there's there's certainly oh oh it looks like we've got something going on here. And I think we're back. And we're back. All right. <laughs> I, something happened. I, I don't know. I, I mean, the, this is this is something that Sean and I don't have any background on. Anyway, um, <laughs> I had a great riff. Oh yeah. Okay. So 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 you may be in a position where where you start thinking about about being planful for the future. Maybe that's now. Maybe that's in a little bit. Maybe that's um. Uh, maybe that's not yet in your in your horizon, but it will be at some point. I think there's two there's two areas that we need to think about broadly, um, and and the first is a little is a little concerning, right? The first area is what did we miss? <laughs> um, the uh, the Hamilton song, of course, now is uh, is going through is going through my head. What did I miss? Um, but like, what did what did we miss? So as we as we go through, we've done this incredibly rapid deployment. Um, literally, you know, life-saving in some cases. You know, the business. You know, keeping it, keeping it up and running. Um, having, um, having, having teams deployed or whatever technologies deployed in order to support it. Um, there's going to be some areas that 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 either went fast and loose, or you didn't have an opportunity to explore or whatever. So, so coming in there and um, and and making making those right steps. Like, okay, do do you actually need to go and deploy you know dynamic emergency calling like that 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 may that may be necessary if everybody is using their um, if everybody is using teams as their as their main endpoint um, do you do you know have directory stuff that you need to do do you have you know some teams hygiene work that needs to happen did did the the kind of rapid rollout result in a proliferation of teams that then you've got to come and start to and start to call so so there's so there's that piece, right? And I think that's and any any opportunity to kind of start on that, whether that's a pruning exercise or hygiene exercise or a like just you know kind of returning back to 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 the letter of of kind of best practices set of work. Like there's like there's that 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 needs to happen. 
yes, you're able to you're able to keep the business up and running, but you know, let's 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 go back. There's a reason that that this stuff took time because it takes time to do to do quality work in in a lot of cases. So let's let's do that. Let's be sensitive to our end users. Um, you know, as as IT pros, like we, um, I at least think think deeply about how we can enable IT to be sensitive and 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 give grace to our to our end users because a lot of times our end users, especially with all this stuff going on, have a have a tough time and and are and are gonna, you know, are not not only seeing you know the changes in their business, but you know may have stuff going on in their family. They may have be working from home with kids, you know, running around and um, and it's just hard. So you know, having having grace there by our users and maybe maybe they do need to have some 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 good um, you know kind of training. Maybe they do need to have some some work product, you know, something laminated that they can have you know sitting sitting next to them to help them understand how to how to take advantage of these tools. Um, so that's kind of the first piece. The second piece I think about is is around the opportunity, right? Um, so we've always we've historically talked about unified communications as as being two things. Um, one being a a, a way for all of the infrastructure on the back end and the and the interfaces on the front end to be combined in a in a in a reasonable whole you know wholesome construction. So that way, I as IT, I've got one set of infra to maintain. I as an end user, I've got one set of one set of interfaces to to go and understand that, along with being integrated into the business process. And 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 I wonder how much. Um, how much of that opportunity we've had in the in in this last little bit with COVID, and I think it's I think it's been very small. Um, probably in cases where you've needed to have um, integration with with your business process, you you know you can you can do that. But now I think we we have an opportunity with a foundation of 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 folks using Teams to start thinking about Teams differently, to start thinking about Teams as the platform for business integration, for the platform for being able to surface alerts and being able to surface transactions and flows and whatnot from within this um, from within this workspace, that is um, that that's that I think it has a lot of unique opportunities. And I don't. And again, I'm not suggesting that that we should we should be there today. I feel like in a lot of ways um, we're we're still we're still um, I, I want to say that I want to say the word firefighting, but it's not. It's not the right connotation. Like we're still in a in a world where we're we're dealing with the urgency of the moment, mm -hmm. and we're trying to understand for for folks that are historical office workers how how can they best how can they do their best work not in the office, um, and for folks that that aren't historical office workers, you can help us all. <laughs> you can and you can give it. You can give us some guidance on what's the, what's the right path to take there. Because you know what? It's hard and it's weird, um, especially when your kids are still around. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so there. So, <laughs> so like, so so I, I I still think that we're in this we're in this world at, at least at least for a little bit where where we're still firefighting. But but as we come out of that, these are two areas where I really do think that IT can can become the hero of the organization. And that and that's to, I guess the first piece in thinking about it more positively, not, not fixing the stuff that we didn't spend enough time addressing. Maybe that's not the right angle. Maybe it's it's ensuring that the work that was done over the last three months is survivable through the through the next you know five years of the organization. And that is a, and that and that is it does all the right things. Um, so that the organization can can trust to the service and can trust this 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 capability for the next few years. Like that's the first piece, and then the second piece is. And now, what are the ways that we can take advantage of this to to help the business even more? Um, knowing that we will live in uncertain times for quite a while. We don't we don't know where you know necessarily where the economy is going to go. You know broadly for the next couple of years. You, you expect that there's going to be some level of impact. Anything that IT can do to bring greater productivity, greater efficiency, and 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 kind of just greater satisfaction as end users, being able to feel like they can do their best work, that they can 
that they can come into the office and still and still do their best work, even if that's not the way it has been in the past. I think is is really a way that IT can um, can step up and can do and can do amazing things. But I think about those two those two pivots. And Sean, I know we talked we talked a lot about this. Yeah, in, in, in the last couple it, of you know, it, 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 because we literally like. It, it, this conversation that's going on has now happened two or three times where Jamie and I literally talked for, you know, better part of 45 minutes to an hour and, you know, pontificate <laughs> on all things that have happened and what, what communications means. And, you know, one of the things, though, that's really interesting in this is this is where not where, where when I originally created the this the concept of this session in December and it was because Jamie wasn't going to be able to join us. It was going to be him and I, and then it just ended up I was going to go. And now we get to be back together because of the wonders of, of technology. Um, but the one thing that, that stands out is IT and partners and even, even Microsoft sellers and the world we've been in, we have lived in an IT-centric world. Okay? We have lived in the world of bits and bytes and spindles and hardware and infrastructure and protocols. The challenge is, is that we need to now start to be that business to technology translator. You know, um, Gartner said a few years ago, the IT pro of the future will become the broker of services. And I actually think it's actually, there's a piece that needs to be there. It's gonna be the broker of services and relationships, right? The, the IT, professional or the partner or the consultant or or whomever that's living in this space even the practitioners need to be able to understand the business a great example was about a year ago i was in i was meeting with a government agency and we were just having a conversation and one of the people kept leaving the room every 15 minutes they would leave for about three or four minutes and come back. And this is a two day conversation. It was really distracting. Finally, in the second, beginning of the second day, I, I cornered the guy and asked, hey, what, what's going on? And he's like, oh, uh, well, I'm in procurement and I'm trying to just touch base with my legal counsel to redline a master services agreement. I'm like, oh, wow, okay, it must be really important uh it, do you need to like go and take care of that it's like no 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 i do this four or five times a month i was like oh i was like how how much time he's like well it's about five or six days a piece it's like oh big effort no it, it's you know it's about four lines that need to be edited but they need to be back and forth it was literally everybody in that room from that was in there from it their head almost popped off because they're like, wait, we have technology that totally can help with the co-authoring. And by the way, did you know that you don't need to do physical signature? We can use, uh, I think it was DocuSign, I think they were using or whatever, with power, with, with power apps and flow and being able to automate. The business didn't know how or care what the technology was. What we did is we spent 20 minutes translating for the technical folks what the business requirements were, and we mapped out a flow that removed a five-day process to under 45 minutes. This is an example of where we have right now gone fast and dirty and quick to get us deployed. But there is a there is, and I hate to use the word cleanup effort, but there is a there is a a polish and refinement that we have an opportunity as the heroes to do and really to remain that hero through this, right? And that is, is really being able to take those requirements, listen. One of the things we are good at, me included, is we are good at talking about what we know, which is the technology of the day or the protocol that we start talking and it makes us sound great. The hardest skill in the world to learn is listening. I personally, I suffer from it. Oh. We interrupt this program. This is a national emergency. Important instructions will follow. 
The following message is transmitted at the request of the United States government. This is not a test. Hi, I'm Ken Lasko. You may know me from UC Dial Plans. Please, if anyone knows David Hasselhoff, can you please tell him to stop impersonating me? Thank you. <laughs> oh, great. Then you cut back to me. Because, cause, right. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> I don't even know where to go there. So, <laughs> um, Ken Lasko, Ken Lasko uh, great, great MVP, great member of the community. Um, you see dialplans.com if you need dial plans. And and you don't want to use my product, you could use his. I guess it's fine. It's only been around for the last, I don't know, eight or nine, ten, whatever, fifteen years. Um, and yeah, and 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 I don't know why. Um, yeah, that's that's really distressing about about the hop. <laughs> wow. And, and there there is your that is your business to technical translation right there, right? <laughs> oh my god. Um I, really, really quick, just to try to regain some composure of solid uh, in my hand. You know, one of the things, though, that that is really uh, that I think we're seeing, we're seeing not only in this this conference, but we're seeing across the board is we're we're seeing forethought going into what's next. Right. Jamie, you were talking about what's for what's what's next with the economy, what's next with IT. But one of the things I mean, I sat there and listened to, you know, Jerry yesterday during the the community keynote with Lori and Jeff, and they were talking specifically about how to build community and doing things like dance parties, virtual dance parties, and, you know, you've got happy hours and, and you know, the goat in a meeting. You know, all of these things that, that we're having to learn to adapt to this new world, we as, you know, communications and collaboration professionals are, are now giving us that opportunity to create follow through, stay ahead of the curve. You were like the first responders for your business. Right. You kept the lights on. You made sure they stayed healthy and you taught them how to use. Now it's time to take it to the next level. You know, very similarly that we think about schools. I know me as an example, I literally had to take seventh grade algebra again this year, um, you know, because my son was taking it. So therefore I was taking it and teaching it beside him. And as we see the evolution in education and with schools and what they're doing, we're also seeing that, that businesses have that evolution and, and you can remain that hero um, by keeping that forethought, by keep staying ahead of the curve and, and honestly and listening to what the business is needing. Any kind of closing thoughts there, Jamie? The, the yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I just, <clears throat> the, um, the, the thing I think about too is I completely concur with everything that you said. I, I would add that it please work to in, in whatever capacity you have the opportunity to continue to hold um, Microsoft accountable. Um, and when I when I say Microsoft, I, I also mean you know all of our partners and consultants and MVPs and everyone else um, in the community continue to hold us accountable on this. Um, it the the accountability is shared amongst amongst us as the community, right? As, of practitioners who who do do unified communication stuff. Um, we 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 have this um, we have this work in front of us. We 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 definitely know um, we definitely know some areas where we need to go. But especially when I, when when we think about what are the things that that IT needs in order to advance. Um, you know their 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 ability within an organization to drive change in order to you know provide you know additional data to be able to whatever the case may be like I I want to I want to make sure that everyone feels the right and the responsibility even to to come back to Microsoft and to say hey 
these things aren't working. This this is suboptimal. This is stuff that um, that if we if we had it a little bit differently, it would make a lot of difference to our business. Um, you know, we again, you know, as Sean said, you know, listening can be hard. Um, it it can be hard to hear that you know something something sideways with your product or or something's not working in the right way, and it and it's frustrating because there's pride there that um, around around what we build, but but fundamentally, like we do this because you know we 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 need to have services and 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 stuff operating in the best possible way for our customers and, and we don't know all of those all those things we have some good we have some good ideas um but it's it's critical that that the funnel of of input continues to be filled um especially as we as we egress out of this 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 time period where um it's very urgent and very um a very you know, dramatic and quick and everything else and we're we're moving into a time period where we can be more thoughtful and we could be um be be pragmatic i would i would say you know today you, your business likely sees it in a very different light than than they saw it a year ago and and i and i'd suggest that it's a positive light it's one that um it's one that's it's one that says that that it can can respond in a dramatic fashion when there's dramatic risks to the business um, out there in the world, and um, and and you all have proven that, and so that that does open up the opportunity to be able to um, bring a lot of valuable um, a lot of valuable transformation into the business, um, and so so IT has has a, has that opportunity now, um, but we all have the accountability around what's the right set of software and services and subscription SKUs, you know, kind of on the product side, and then. Um, on the delivery side, like what's the what's the content, the information, and the deliverables, and all the all the pieces that are necessary for for folks to be successful. Um, this you know this this isn't going to be quick, and it's not going to it's not going to go away um, anytime soon. And and when it does, it will it will be a it will be a different world, but it's one that we have the opportunity to help shape. Um, and so and so I'm I'm excited to be a part of that. I I always I always enjoy you know. Thinking about the hard stuff that we get to do um, within within Teams Admin Center, and I always just hope that that all of that accrues to to something good and positive within your businesses. Um, and so and so, yeah, that that's that's kind of the it's kind of where my uh, where my head's at. Although now I'm now I'm worried that we're going to get interrupted by another emergency <laughs> call. But but oh no, thank you for thank you for bringing this up. Like so, yeah. so Sean just Sean just shared the uh, the slide of all the of all the you know different organizations that help make this happen. Like. This is fantastic. Thank you all so much for yeah. um, for doing the work here to to make this to make the show a success. It's amazing. And and even to to kind of piggyback on that, I I want to actually throw a, a huge thank you out to you know the organizers and all the volunteers that have put this on. Right. Not only have they gone and and coordinated with all these sponsors. But literally, I, like the communications, the the automation they've built into this, you know, has really um, taken this to a first class event. And and I really just want to that and the whole VR thing just blows my mind. Like I can't even like grok that. So check out the booths in VR. I still can't get my like my space thing to work because I'm it, I'm just old, right? <laughs> <laughs> My son, on the other hand, is like, oh, I'll use my Oculus and I can go through it. And I'm like, okay, you help me out. So, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Uh, Jamie, I, don't know, I, I just wanted to, I'm glad that we got a chance to get together and kind of one last time. You know, or not last time, but like. Oh, I our, hope it's not the last time. Well, I mean, we'll find out when we get feedback on this. So, of that's course, right, that's right. for this session, either, for all either. the other. Yeah, for this session, for all the other sessions, uh, you know, definitely ensure that you you get feedback in. You know, let the organizers know, hey, we never want to see these chuckleheads again. Or yeah, maybe there's a little bit of value to be fine to have them back in in some diminished, very limited capacity. Whatever the case may be, um, you know, clearly it, it's a it's a pleasure for 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 Sean and I to to, to come in and talk about this stuff. Um, it's it it is something that we 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 don't often get to do in our in our day to day work. Well, Sean a little bit more than me. Um, but it's uh, but it's always a pleasure. And so, yeah, thank you all so much for coming out. Um, I've got a session a little bit later on. There's a ton of more sessions happening. Um, so so definitely don't hesitate. And of course, anything you can't you can't see live. There's the you know, it's all it's all archived. It's all recorded because you just go check it out, whatever. Um, just amazing. So 
Yeah. This is we should probably let week. these uh, producers go and actually produce other sessions. Cause yeah, <laughs> probably true. All right. So with Thanks that, we'll all. Call- thank you, everybody.